next guest is Scott Jaskik of the uh, Inside Higher Ed to talk about Asian Americans and affirmative action. Welcome, Scott. Thank you. Um, so you wrote a story this week about a brief filed in an upcoming Supreme Court case uh, that challenges race-based admissions at the University of Texas. Uh, what can you tell us about this brief and, and, and why it stood out to you? Sure. The brief stood out because this was Asian American groups opposing affirmative action. In past debates over affirmative action, uh, a, pretty much all minority organizations have backed affirmative action. And here you have a number of Asian American groups saying that they believe Asian American high school students are discriminated against in the admissions process. Okay, and, and does the, the evidence show that? I mean, from what I've seen in places where uh, affirmative action has been eliminated, such as out in, in California, um, it's been a boon for enrollment, particularly at the most selective uh, college, uh, colleges in the U.S. Well, there's, there's evidence on both sides. There is evidence that, all things being equal, Asian Americans tend to need higher SAT or ACT scores or higher GPAs to get in to very selective colleges. But they also appear to need to have higher educational credentials than white students. So um, the idea that uh, any displacement of Asian Americans is because of affirmative action, I would argue that's not yet proven. But there's something going on, and there are competing theories about what's going on. Um, so you say that um, there is some evidence that schools hold Asian applicants to higher standards? Well, on average, if you look at the SAT scores that are available, uh, the averages, say, for elite colleges, um, you will see Asian Americans ha needing, seeming to need higher SAT scores, higher GPAs to get in um, than, than white students, in addition to than other minority students. So that is cited as evidence by critics of uh, any consideration of race that something's wrong with the system. The difficulty here is that when you're talking about selective college admissions, and we're talking here about the, the very top privates and publics, we're talking about places that reject uh, huge numbers of sure. highly qualified applicants. Sure, sure. But I mean, and one of the things that jumped out at me about this story is the focus of affirmative action policies so often is on white students and blacks and Hispanic students. And uh, Asian, uh, the impact on Asians is often overlooked. But at a lot of these highly selective schools, it's pretty much a zero-sum game here for the freshman class. It can only be so big. And to the extent that um, some kids are being given an advantage, for whatever reason, you're necessarily putting other kids at a different at, at a disadvantage, aren't you? Um, th that, that it's true that at these highly selective places, it is a zero sum game. Where there's more debate is is affirmative action the culprit in terms of Asian Americans not getting in, or might it be other preferences? Might it be uh, preferences for alumni children? Might it be preferences for children of donors? Might it be preferences for athletes? So it, and and because most uh, so the most selective colleges have what is known as holistic admissions where they're looking at a lot of variables and there's not just a formula it is difficult to prove